Thank you for joining me for another UnleashingFreedom.com podcast. This is Richard Wells. Dan Coyle, author of The Talent Code, recently blogged about the challenge inherent in selecting future high performers for professional organizations ranging from military academies, top music schools, and even professional sports. Ironically, he points out that in spite of millions of dollars and thousands of hours invested in measuring current skill level, success in selecting the next star performer seems to be more luck than science. For example, The NFL subjects prospective recruits to rigorous evaluations in the combines, where they measure explosiveness, speed, agility, strength, and much more. At the end of the day, they literally know which players are bigger, faster, and stronger, and these are generally selected. He observed, however, that only 50% of these biggest and fastest athletes are still found in the league after four years. So if they are the most dominant specimens, why are they being cut from NFL teams? Well, the author suggests that perhaps growth potential should be measured and not just current skills and ability. A measurement of grit has proven to be a better predictor. (laughs) Grit, you say? How on earth can you even begin to measure that? Well, actually, one study conducted by Angela Duckworth does, and it suggests that the ability to see long-term and take ownership of that vision is a better predictor of success than, quote, raw talent. Now, many characters from the American Revolution could rightly be considered gritty, and it could be argued that without the staying power developed by many of the founders of America, the United States would not exist today. Now, though many of these founders qualify as gritty, John Adams provides an excellent illustration. For example, what he lacked in diplomacy, grace, and at times self-confidence, he made up for in grit and determination. To set the stage, Listen to his personal account of an incident he later regretted. He records in his journal that he dined at the Cranches, who invited a visiting Englishman to join them. During dinner, the gentleman began, quote, extolling the English sense of justice. Adams, whose revolutionary blood could not be contained, shocked the group when he strongly protested, declaring that, quote, there is no more justice in Britain than in hell. Now, clearly, John could have benefited from Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, but it wouldn't be available for another century to come. Well, jesting aside, John's deacon father certainly had instructed him to control his tongue as taught in the book of James in the Bible, and so his strong self-rebuke is understandable. Quote, I cannot but reflect upon myself with the severity of these rash, inexperienced, boyish, raw, and awkward expressions. A man who has not better government of his tongue No more command of his temper is unfit for everything but child's play and the company of boys. Now, a study of John Adams' life reveals many personal weaknesses, such as his temper, and even an early dislike of school. In fact, his feelings of inadequacy caused him to consider returning home rather than appearing for his oral examination for entrance into Harvard. Had someone measured his skill at any of these points, they certainly would not have selected, let alone predicted, that he would become President of the United States or Chief Diplomat to Great Britain or Delegate to the Continental Congress. His life then illustrates that a strong predictor of success is found in developing the ability to continue to grow and overcome. Stephen Covey tells us that learning this attribute is accomplished by developing the ability to govern our decisions in that brief moment between an outward stimulus and our response to it. Being conscious that we do choose is paramount. In a journal entry on July 21, 1756, while he was a tutor in Braintree preparing to become a lawyer, we learn that John Adams' grit begins with his ability to see a finished product and work toward it. Quote, I am resolved to rise with the sun and to study scriptures on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday mornings, and to study some Latin authors the other three mornings. Noons and nights I intend to read English authors. I will rouse up my mind and fix my attention. I will stand collected within myself and think upon what I read and what I see. I will strive with all my soul to be something more than persons who have had less advantages than myself. Now clearly, with that kind of resolve, self-mastery was easy for John. Not so. He actually records that the next morning he slept in and failed to follow through with his goal. So here sits a young Harvard graduate 
an aspiring lawyer with a goal to improve himself, and yet he failed on his first attempt. Later, when he started his law practice, he would lose his first case. So the point then is not that he experienced failure, but that his failures were not greater than his determination to overcome them. Now, in spite of his challenges, he had a clear vision of the country he desired and of the man he hoped to become. When all was said and done, John Adams served as a member of the Continental Congress. He had a very successful marriage. He served as diplomat to France and England, as vice president under George Washington, and as president of the United States. And he watched one of his sons follow him to that same office, president of the United States. He lived a full life because he lived on purpose. In fact, dying on the 50th anniversary of the cause he championed louder than any other, the Declaration of Independence. So whether you are a John Adams, an NFL player, or perhaps more likely a devoted parent or an aspiring entrepreneur, it turns out that it's not so much your apparent talent and strengths that determine success, but rather your grit. So maybe you are inadequate in a real or perceived way, and maybe someone else is a little faster, more eloquent, or quicker on their feet. But both John Adams and even the NFL demonstrate that it's not really, quote, raw talent that is the greatest determinant of success, but rather determination itself. So get clear on your vision and dreams. Make some goals to read, study, learn, and grow, and then decide to keep going because success goes to the gritty, not to the one who had it easy. Thank you for joining us on this podcast today. Please visit unleashingfreedom.com for personal applications. 